U.S. Air Force's first jet power and swept wing bomber, the Boeing B-47 Stratojet, was a hybrid aircraft that blended World War II building methods with an aerodynamic design appropriate for the jet engine age. As a nuclear bomber that could hit targets within the Soviet Union, it was the backbone of strategic air command during the Cold War. The crews of the B-47 were prepared for any attack at any time, and some were even trained to launch within 15 seconds of one another, giving the U.S. an unstoppable nuclear strike force. A turning point in the history of American aviation, Boeing's jet-powered swept wing type represents a breakthrough in aircraft design. American manufacturers expanded their research into jet-powered recon bombers after the U.S. Army Air Force declared an informal request for them in 1943. This resulted in an official request for a design that could travel at a maximum speed of 550 miles per hour and a cruise speed of 450 miles per hour. After the USAF received the proposals from North American Aviation, Boeing, Convair, and Martin Company in December 1944, they were given contracts worth $10 million to create prototypes. While Boeing and Martin concentrated on six-engine aircraft, North American and Convair concentrated on four-engine designs. George C.S., an aerodynamicist at Boeing, visited Germany for research. He submitted wind tunnel data on swept wing jets that he had found in a German aeronautics laboratory to Boeing's main office. A significant development in American aviation design history, the first B-47 prototype with 35-degree swept back wings, was created by engineers in a wind tunnel. Three people made up the crew of the B-47, the navigator, gunner, co-pilot, and pilot, and were enclosed in a huge bubble canopy. Later models had no outside visibility, making the B-47 a precursor to modern large jet aircraft. Designed to create sufficient push for takeoff, the B-47 was a novel aircraft whose early prototypes had 18 tiny rocket units and a fuselage for jet-assisted takeoff. 44 years after the Wright brothers' inaugural flights on December 17, 1947, the first B-47 prototype took to the air after four years of development. Test pilots Robert Robbins and Scott Ostler departed Boeing Field in Seattle and traveled to Moses Lake Airfield in central Washington state, covering a distance of 27 minutes in the air. Lead engineers Holden Whittington and pilot Robbins were dubious about the prototype's ability to fly because of how unconventional it was. But they soon discovered they were piloting a remarkable and innovative airplane. Test pilot Chuck Yeager observed that the B-47's aerodynamic purity made landing on the lake bed of Edwards Air Force Base challenging. The aircraft broke multiple speed and distance records during its testing phase, including the record for the fastest time to traverse the United States in less than four hours at an average speed of 608 miles per hour. Because of its greater speed, it merely needed defensive weaponry except its rear. Due to a competition in which the North American models performed better than the Convair 4 engine prototypes, in the middle of 1948, the Boeing B-47 was produced in small quantities. On September 3, 1948, the USAAF formally signed a deal for 10 aircraft, officially known as the Stratojet, after realizing the B-47's extraordinary potential. During the Cold War, the Air Force Strategic Air Command relied heavily on the Boeing B-47 to manage, organize, equip, train, and readied Air Force crews for potential war. The B-47 Stratojet was evolved into several variants for SAC operations between 1951 and 1965. 2032 B-47s were constructed in all and they were used as remote control aircraft, missile transporters, and reconnaissance aircraft. The jet flew with a light touch, just like a fighter, and was effectively managed in the air. 
Usually on a 1-3 alert, the B-47 was based in bases in the UK, Morocco, Guam, Greenland, Alaska, and Spain. In the late 1950s, the Strategic Air Command, SAC, relied heavily on the strategic bomber, the Stratojet. It was outfitted with nuclear weapons and fuel, and its crews had received training in MITO launches or minimum interval takeoffs. Turbulence and the lift of wingtip vortices made these bombers extremely deadly. The production of the water injection equipped turbojet engines for the B-47s produced a thick cloud of smoke that made it difficult for pilots to see. The jet's output started to drop in the late 1950s, despite being the mainstay of the SAC. B-47 operations transitioned from high-altitude bombing scenarios to low-altitude strikes in its last years. The crews of Stratojets were trained in the art of surprise attacks, which involved flying at low altitudes and traveling at 25 knots, then rising rapidly to release the nuclear payload. A mid-sized nuclear bomber, the Stratojet was perfect for missions involving strategic reconnaissance. Between 1952 and 1956, the U.S. Air Force received in-depth photographs of Soviet military and industrial facilities through flyovers carried out by modified B-47s. The Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Program and Soviet defensive installations were the subjects of important photographic intelligence given by these planes. They also gathered samples of Soviet nuclear explosions from the air. These operations were dangerous, though, as two of the recon B-47s was destroyed by enemy aircraft, killing seven crew members and taking two prisoners for a short time. The high accident rate of the B-47, more than 200 of them, or 10% of the total, was blamed for the model's downfall. Given that the three-man crew needed to be given whole attention during crises, crew coordination was crucial. Weather-related discomforts, hunger, and exhaustion also played a role in the crashes. Though the B-47's advances helped it perform better, they eventually contributed to its demise. Despite its apparent ease of use, the aircraft required precise operation throughout the whole flight from takeoff to landing. The crash of the B-47's emphasizes the necessity for enhanced aviation safety protocols. A B-47 Stratojet carrying a 7,600-pound Mark 15 nuclear bomb and a F-86 Sabre fighter crashed in 1958 in the vicinity of Savannah, Georgia during a practice combat run. Significant damage was done to the aircraft, including one of its jet engines losing power. After three failed landing attempts, the pilot was forced to make a gentle drop of the unloaded weapon off the coast of Savannah, close to Tybee Island. The pilot was able to land safely without the thousands of pounds of additional weight after executing a gentle drop. The unarmed bomb was never located, even after a thorough search that lasted nearly a year. The risks of operating an aircraft at full exhaustion were brought to light by this incident. The last phase of the Stratojet bomber started in 1963, and by 1966, it was no longer in use by the SAC. Air Force owned, the final B-47 was used until 1989. Throughout the 1970s, the U.S. Navy had these test versions in stock, providing sporadic support to the Fleet Electronic Warfare Systems Organization. The last aircraft was flown to Castle Air Force Base in California, for static display at the Castle Air Museum from the Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake. To watch more videos on American bombers, click the link on the left. To watch more than two dozen videos on German aircrafts, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.